This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 81 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Back on Track with the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products and Equestrian Collections. This is Chris Stafford in Lexington, Kentucky. And I'm Mary Lordson in Harvard, Massachusetts, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Hi, Mary. Hi, Chris. Welcome back. Thank you. Hey, it was good to see you just a week ago, or I not know. even. I know. It was great to see you, too, you know, because we do everything remotely, and, you know, we're just a voice on the end of the line here <laughs> when we're recording the show. So it was great to catch up with you. But I have to say, the first thing, um, before we get into this week's show, Mary, uh, you poor thing, still in your neck brace after that horrible fall that you had. So let's update our listeners because when you were last on the show, which is only a couple of weeks or so ago, but it was just before you had that accident. And I know you, gosh, it frightened us all, but it was a message again to wear your, wear your helmet, of course. But tell us uh, all how you're doing now. Well, Today, I can say that I'm doing pretty well. I'm not in any sort of pain. Um, I'm still wearing this very frustrating neck brace or my necklace, as I like to call it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm trying to start a new trend. Um, but uh, anyways, not by choice, really. Um, yeah, so a few weeks ago, just as an update at how this all actually happened, um, riding a young horse that violently, violently threw me off Um after bucking and rearing and doing all sorts of crazy things. And um, I landed on my head and got right back up. Lucky to have my mom, Joy, down there um, lifeguarding, as we call it, with young horses. And she watched this horrible thing happen. Um, but she was right there to catch the horse and make sure that I was okay. We thought I was okay um, and almost didn't go to the hospital. But after looking at my helmet, which I'm telling everyone now truly saved my life um, or at least prevented worse injuries um, as it was cracked upon impact, um, it actually separated. Um I uh, we looked took a look at that and said, "Yep, probably you should go to the hospital." And we did. And I, um, after some CAT scans and X-rays, found that I actually had um, fractured my C5 vertebrae and also the base of my skull, um, two uh, very important <laughs> parts parts of the human body. And um, I was then put in a neck brace, which I've been in for the last two and a half weeks, and um, unsure of the prognosis as of right now until I go in for my next follow-up appointment. But um, doing okay. At least um, I'm able to still record shows with you, Chris, and um, same with Glenn, and uh, do most of the things that I like to do, except the biggest thing being I I can't ride, um, which is definitely frustrating right now. Well, certainly you have a ne- one heck of a necklace there, but without the bling, Mary, we don't need we don't need that kind of necklace. <laughs> yeah, I've been, t- <laughs> yeah, I would. I'm teasing around that I should bling my neck brace. Yeah, you should actually. Coming into the holiday season, I think you should put a little bit of tinsel around there. And, yeah, you know, spruce it up a bit. Yeah, I have to say one of the best parts of wearing it is um, going through the airport. I everybody pitied me, all of the airport <laughs> officials. So I got uh, you know first class to everything. They're letting me go through first everything. So I might I might be wearing this longer for the next time that I travel. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's any airport uh, authorities out there listening into the show, if you see Mary Lawrence come through with a neck brace, just double check that she really needs it or she's just getting <laughs> priority. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to keep it in my closet it for when I actually have it off and <laughs> put it back on for when I travel again. Well, I'm relieved that you're not in any pain, Mary, but what a frustration. I mean, does it, does it feel very scary if you take it off to get in the shower? Do you feel insecure? Does it make it any different to feel? Well, believe it or not, I have to put on a completely different one when I go to take a shower and I have to sleep in it. So there's actually not a moment where I'm not wearing it. Oh, man, that's that's tough. That's very, very yeah. tough. When's your next checkup? The- I'm actually headed to the doctor next week, so I'll find out um, when I can take this darn thing off and when I can ride again um, and get back to my normal activities, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, But again, I I would much rather be in this situation than 
um, in another. And uh, again, I, I owe it so much to my helmet. And I've always been a huge and very strong supporter of helmet use. And uh, this really hit close to home. And I can't encourage people enough to, you know, take the time to invest buying a n nice helmet, um, one that's really going to uh, help you out and put it on. I mean, it, at this point in the game, uh, it's it's not something to be ashamed of to wear. If anything, you should be proud to wear your helmet. Yeah, I think so. We should start a new logo there or something. Be proud, wear your, lo wear your helmet. Yeah. Well, I know you've been awfully busy, and as, as we said, we caught up last week at the USDF convention and that uh, kept you really occupied with the youth uh, activities you're being on the youth committee there and we uh, are going to be featuring the usdf throughout the show here not least of all with your updates uh, in a few moments and then we're going to get george williams the president of the usdf uh, to tell us uh, what took, took place um, during the convention this year what the highlights were and the symposium down there in jacksonville florida so We'll get to all that uh, very shortly, but before we do, uh, we're going to catch up with uh, Glenn, who's going to bring us some product news from our presenting sponsors, Back on Track. There's a company that we just love that offers products to improve lifestyle and mobility, and they have been the mainstay in European therapeutic therapies for many years. Plus, they are used and endorsed by many of the top dressage, eventing, and show jumping riders worldwide. We are talking about back on track, of course. If you're looking for a quality ho holiday gift for any horse lover that will truly benefit their horse, then look no further than any of Back on Track's products, including exercise boots, bell boots, saddle pads, sheets, and so much more. You can find all of their products at backontrackproducts.com. That's backontrackproducts.com. Or give them a call at 888-758-9836. That's 888-758-9836. Well, our thanks again to our loyal sponsors back on track. Well, the news this week is uh, very short and sweet, actually. We, we really have just one major item that uh, is catching everybody's attention on this side of the pond, and that is the cancellation of the World Dressage Masters competition that had been taking place for the last two years down in Florida. They have cancelled it, um, apparently, according to Equine Sports uh, Productions, they, the reason behind that was that the, the leading riders, the star riders from Europe, were not able to attend this year. Mm -hmm. And without that um, star power, they wouldn't be getting the uh, spectators that they need and the obviously the support that they need to host it over here. That is the reason behind it. I know it's a, of a huge disappointment because that really was quite an event on the calendar, Mary. Did you get down there at all? Were you there? I did. I attended it um, last year, and it was such a great event to see all of those elite riders here in the United States being able to see Anki, Stefan, and um, Isabel go head-to-head -head, um, on U.S. soil. It was really great, and the whole venue was um something that was very exciting to see so it's a shame that it won't be coming back it certainly is well maybe next time around and it certainly is a popular event well we should remind everybody that the next leg of the 2010-2011 reem acra fei world cup series actually takes place in olympia at olympia london which is a wonderful christmas show that is going to be between 14th and 15th of december uh, so that's coming up uh, very, very quickly here, and uh, you can get more information from the link that we'll post on our website. Uh, great, great show. It's a very festive show, that is, Mary. I haven't been for a few years since I've lived on this side of the pond, but uh, when I was over there, I was uh, reporting that, that show for a few years. And it's, you know, do everybody get that by that time, you know, we're so close to Christmas, everybody really gets into the Christmas spirit. Do you, do you, yeah. get, very, do you get very festive? Do you do, you do the trimmings? <laughs> Yeah, I love it. This time of the year is so much fun, and I love to get into the holiday spirit. But that sounds like it's an amazing thing to be a part of because it's horses and holidays, and that's yes. that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody gets into the uh, Shetland pony races as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good fun and some great competition, of course, with the jumpers and uh, with the dressage uh, riders there out uh, competing for a place at the World Cup final, which will take place in April in Leipzig, of course, in Germany. Germany. So we'll bring you news of that on next week's show. Um, we've got a fun show to tell you about uh, next week. Well, we'll get to that shortly. But before we get to uh, uh, the next uh, commercial break here, we've got uh, 
an update from Mary. You're going to tell us what, I mean, when you were down in Florida, you had particular responsibilities with the USDF's Youth Committee. Uh, what were the highlights of that this year, Mary? Well, Chris, I've been a member of the what used to be known as the Youth Executive Board, but is now the Youth Programs Advisory Subcommittee, a bit of a tongue twister. Um, and basically this year there was a lot of discussion um, about uh, the youth programs such as um, the USEF dressage seat finals, um, and including that as part of a regional qualifier for NEJYRC, which... I'm definitely a supporter of, and it seemed like that was the general census, that people were a great supporter of including um, dressage seat equitation classes as a qualifier for young riders, um, simply because equitation is so important, and I've always been a big fan of it. Um, And uh, another thing that we've talked about, too, is extending, going back to the um, equitation classes, is that we'd extend extend the age to 21-year-olds. So it wasn't limited to just... um, 18-year-olds uh, as it has been in the past. Now we would extend the age so the 21-year-old competitors that are vying for a spot on the NAJORC team would have to ride in equitation classes as well. So that's just one of the ideas in the works. Um, another discussion was building team competitions for young riders in each region um, so that we can have sort of a North American young rider feel within each of our regions without actually having to um, ride in FEI classes. This would be really open to rider, young riders of all ages, um, which is, again, another thing that um, I definitely support. Um, and finally, those of us on the Youth Programs Advisory Subcommittee are always trying to find ways to get the message out about youth programs within the USDF. So there has been talk about us um, shortly or within the coming months um, to put out a whole uh, youth programs section within the USDF Connection magazine that would really highlight all of the great events, clinics, uh, competitions, qualifiers, everything of that manner to um, to uh, putting it into the Connection magazine. Just because, again, a lot of people tend to miss the dates for qualifiers. And this way, um, you would really have a tangible list of all of the events going on for youth programs. And finally, um, we are always looking for members to come on to the Youth Programs uh, Advisory Subcommittee. Um, So this is kind of my shout out to all young riders out there that are interested in getting more involved with USDF. Uh, You can certainly contact Erica Minx of the USDF and uh, see if there's a spot available for you. Uh, We really want to reach out and hear from people from all over the nation. And uh, we do have some open spots. Um, Oh, and again, one other thing that I guess I can bring up would be the high school program program, um, which is a USDF program that uh, is um, really a great thing in the works and has been for the last couple of years. Um, it, and that basically is that um, we would be bringing dressage to USD, uh, I'm sorry, bringing dressage to high school and that you would be able to bring, um, you would be able to bring in forms from the USDF and um show it to your school and see if they would be interested in bringing dressage in as a uh, physical education program. Very well, thanks for that update. And I know you're also on the USEF, uh, US Equestrian Federation's Youth Council as well. So you're very involved with these youth programs. I am, yeah. And I, I'm so passionate about it. And one other thing that we talked about was extending the age 28, the Brentina Cup age, which I'm really excited about because that means that I get to stay on board on a lot of these councils and um, committees. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was as if you, you know, haven't got enough to do, you go. <laughs> you're just one busy girl. And we're going to point out also that Mary Larson now has her own website. And I do. We're, we're going to put a link to that. Um, it looks very, very smart, Mary. Congratulations <laughs> on that. You've, do you feel very grown up having your own website? <laughs> I do. I feel like I'm really on my own now. And it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I can thank my sister, Whitney, for helping me put that together. Terrific. Well, c- great. Well, um, as I said, you you were really busy with that USDF um, and the youth council, you know, the programs that you take part in down there. Was there anything else that you had to do while you at the USDF convention this year, Mary? 
Hmm, let's see. I attended some regional meetings um, and I just did a lot of networking. I had I made a lot of time for meeting up with my, my friends that are all over the country. And again, that's a great that's the, one of the great things about convention is that you do get to see all these people that are so passionate about your sport and they're all in one place. Yeah, it it is a great way, great way to to catch up with them, and if you don't see them at competitions, um, but uh, it was, certainly was a busy time for you. Of course, I was down there emceeing the awards banquet and salute gala, and also uh, at the symposium as well. And a lot of people came up and said hello, that listened to the show. So I was delighted to, you know, actually put a face to a lot of the listeners. And you know, we know the listeners are out there, Mary. Um, it, it, but it's always nice to actually get to meet them. So that was great fun. Yeah, it's true. And it's a nice form of flattery, too. I, I bumped into a bunch of people that were very complimentary of the show. And it's it's nice to have that support. And like you said, actually meet these people face to face. It certainly is. Well, I want to um, put a shout out for a couple of listeners, Debbie McNally and Marsha Anderson. They were at the symposium. They came over and said hello. And I'm going to tell you a little bit later on what we talked about. But before we get to our guest this week, uh, George Williams, the president of the United States Equestrian uh, Dressage Federation. I'm sorry, George. Uh, we do gonna we do need to take a break here to uh, get an update on product information from Glenn on uh, our sponsors, Equestrian Collections. <laughs> Your source for all your holiday shopping this year is EquestrianCollections.com. EquestrianCollections.com offers all the holiday gift-giving ideas that you would ever want for your wife, for your husband, for that horsey kids in your life, for your horse. You can cover them all, your farrier, your veterinarian, all the professionals in the horse world are covered as well. You can find all the gifts you'd possibly need at equestriancollections.com. And just for the listeners of the Horse Radio Network, they have offered a coupon. Just a promo. use the promo code radio show, all one word radio show, at checkout and you'll get $10 off your next order of $120 or more. So that's coupon code radio show at checkout and you'll get $10 off your next order of $120 or more for all of your holiday shopping needs at equestriancollections.com. Well, thanks again to our loyal sponsors there, Equestrian Collections, and uh, they, of course, make this show possible, and, and not least of all, along with uh, my guest co host each week, and Mary Larson's with me this week. Mary, um, I know that uh, it's getting cold up there in Harvard, Massachusetts, but I have to tell you we, you, we don't have any sympathy for you from here in Kentucky <laughs> because it is 18 degrees with <laughs> snow. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess I really don't have anything to complain about. <laughs> Not yet. And I know you'll have your weather to come, but you're going to head south to the sun, aren't you? I am, but still have to uh, battle it out for a couple more months. Oh, OK. Well, as I mentioned, George Williams is uh, the president of the U.S. Dressage Federation, and he had a very busy week last week at the convention and symposium. So I thought it uh, be appropriate to catch up with him and get his take on all the activities that took place down there, what the highlights were. So let's get George on the line. Well, George, welcome to the Dressage Radio Show, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Well, it's great to have you on. I know you have had a particularly busy week with the USDF convention, and and I know that an awful lot of business took place down there, as always happens for your annual convention and for the symposium. But I want, I'd like to begin, since this is your first time on the show, George, um, by giving our listeners a little bit of background, how you got involved with the USDF and how long you've been president. Well, I, boy, I don't remember remember my first USDF meeting, uh, what year it was. It was um, a number of years ago, and I attended just purely out of interest to see what was happening at these meetings. I ended up becoming particularly interested in the competitors, and at that time there was a competitors' council. And um, I ended up, over after a couple of years of attending the meetings, uh, becoming the chair of the competitors' council. And through that, and through some of my other involvements uh, with the U.S. Equestrian Federation and their dressage committee, um, and of course the 
at that time it was AHSA Dressage Committee. But over time, um, I really became more interested in the governance of our sport, as as well as as you know trying to continue to participate as an active athlete. Um, so through time, I, I I ended up becoming vice president, and that was uh, boy about. Nine years ago, eight, eight years ago, I guess, and it was eight years ago. And then the last year uh, was uh, 2009. Was Sam Barrett, who was the president of USDF for nine years, his term it was up, and he did not want to run again. And after a lot of going back and forth and giving it a lot of thought, I decided that I would run for the position of president. Um, thinking that maybe I had something to offer the organization and could help lead it forward uh, for the next few years anyway. So I have been in on the office of president for one year. So this was my first convention that, that has, you know, that I was uh, basically in charge and responsible for and, and uh, running as president. Well, how did that feel? Well, I was, um, all, all in all, it, it, it was pretty much as I expected. I, of course, have been to so many conventions. Uh, you never know coming into the into a convention what the issues will be. But we have been over the years trying to improve our transparency of what the executive board is up to, and also uh, bringing the items uh, to our delegates. The USDF uh, system of governance uses delegates, and we have what we call group member organizations. They're your local dressage clubs. Uh, they are allowed to sell, send delegates to the convention. And also we have uh, delegates representing our participating members. Those are sort of the individual members. Those are the individual members, I should say, from around the country. Uh, a lot of our participating members are active competitors. So it, it's, uh, as I said, it's run through a system of delegates. Uh, the delegates we call it the um, board. Of, they make up the board of governors, and <clears throat> so we bring issues before the board of governors, and they get to vote on on these issues and really make a lot of the de- decisions on the fundamentals of how the organization is run. So this year, of course, no different to any other. You had all that business to attend to down there in Jacksonville, Florida. What were really the highlights of this year's convention, George? Um, well, we always, some of the governance issues, we have our usuals, of course, uh, passing the budget, um, which is which obviously is, very, is crucial to our survival. Um, we had, uh, this year, we had, we have a major change moving forward. We have decided to add three members to our executive board. Uh, and those three members, we refer to as at-large directors. And they will come from, we have three councils representing sort of three divisions, if you will, of the organization. Um, we have an administrative uh, council, and which, of course, is in charge of the administrative type of things. It includes things like the historical committee, bylaws committee, and that type of thing. We have another council we refer to as the activities council. That, those are really our sport programs. Um, uh, competition, um, yeah, competition and uh, sport horse breeding and, and regional championships all fall under that. And then we have a technical committee, and that's the, the committee that has the technical delegates, uh, the judges committee, and uh, that type of uh, instructor certification and that type of of, of uh, committees under in you know within that council. So. What, what what really changed this year is that we will be moving forward. We will be adding a, an at-large director that will represent each one of those councils. So each one of our sort of groups of or division, if you will, of business. And I, I'm very excited about this. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to bring even more expertise to our executive board. It's going to allow our committees to have, in a sense, a direct channel to the executive board to help promote uh, their ideas and, and the programs that they would like to see 
really develop and move forward. Well, one of the topics that I think was addressed this time was the helmet rule. What was the outcome of that, George? Um, the helmet rule, we, well, first let me say that the United States Dressage Federation only is in a position only to make recommendations on rule changes. The United States Equestrian Federation is, of course, our national governing body, and that is the organization that actually makes the rule the uh, makes the rules. Uh, we do have the uh, let me back up a little bit. The the USDF Executive Board had made a recommendation to the United States Equestrian Federation's Dressage Committee that we put forward a rule change proposal uh, regarding the use of helmets. And uh, the the way that the rule change proposal moved forward uh, was for it to be riders in the national level, all national level tests, as well as riders, um, I believe it's under under the age or up to the age of 18 is how it's worded, uh, are required to wear, will be required to wear um, approved uh, safety headwear, uh, protective head headgear, I should say, um, in the very near future. I'm not sure exactly when the rule will go into effect. The actual uh, rule gets voted on at the United States Equestrian Federation's annual meeting in January. The Dressage Committee was 100% in favor of this rule change proposal, so both groups really are moving it forward. So what is the thinking behind the age limit, then? Why why would that play a part to have an age limit on wearing helmets? The, why not for just for everyone that gets on a horse? Well, it, um, at this point, we, what what we feel, I and mean, what we're moving forward, I would say, um, carefully and in a manner that we can easily enforce. And I think what this does, when you when you let me clarify that, if if someone is competing at the FEI levels, at this stage they are not required to. I think it, it, that the very in the very near future, the FEI will adopt a similar rule. Uh, and we may see after a year that this really, you know, that, that uh, this rule makes a lot of sense and we should move forward and include the FEI levels. Uh, what we thought we wanted to get a rule through, um, I think one has to understand that with the United States Equestrian Federation, there are a lot of breeds and disciplines represented. I'm not sure exactly the number, but uh, it, there are quite a few. and and when a rule change proposal goes forward like this, it's not just going forward to be approved by the dressage uh, portion of the USEF, but it's, it has to be approved by the entire board of the United States Equestrian Federation. So we have to have buy-in from all groups, uh, all breeds, and all uh, disciplines. So we felt that this, this one we can easily get through. It makes a lot of sense, and it's a good starting point. Now, you also were electing a new vice president. How did that election turn out, George? Yeah, we had three candidates running for vice president, um, three very qualified candidates. I, it was, I think, quite a, a spirited um, discussion, quite a spirited debate, and it was. it's always fun to hear, of course, to hear their speeches. Uh, we ended up, the delegates voted in favor of Beth Jenkins to be our new vice president moving forward. Tell us about uh, Beth. Where does she come from? Beth is, is from Massachusetts. She is from Region 8. Her background, has been, she's been very involved in the New England Dressage Association um, for a number of years. She has been the show organizer for the, we call it the Nita Fall CDI. Um, it's, in need of, it's actually a CDIW. Um, it, it, if you look, uh, it's also known as the Socrates CDIW. Um, she has been running I, that show for, boy, I, I don't know, for a number of years. She's been very, she's been very involved from an organizational point of view from New England Dressage. Um, she is a, was a rider, uh, instructor and has done a lot in that aspect as well.
Well, you also held your symposium in conjunction with convention, and I believe that was well attended, George. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we held a, a symposium with uh, Terry Rockwell and um, Lilo Four were our presenters of the symposium. Um, it basically <clears throat> was a symposium about being on the on the levels. In other words, uh, with introducing the new dressage test uh, that the USEF just came out with as of December first. Uh, presenting those tests and some of the thinking behind it, how you would ride them, how you would present them in competition, and adding, uh, they added a lot of extra, shall we say, on, on how to get the horses going better and improving the contact and uh, really making, I think, fairly significant improvements in the horses that they had in the, in the symposium. Um, it was very well attended and, and we were I was able, I was lucky enough to be able to watch the first day. Unfortunately, I couldn't watch the second day. I had to get back to home to continue riding my own horses after being away from for a week. Um, but from what I saw, it, it went very well, and the information uh, was very well presented. And as always, you celebrated your Salute Gala and awards banquet. Uh, tell us about the uh, honorees there. You, I believe the Grand Prix um, uh, award uh, was no surprise. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't think it would be a surprise to anyone. Our Grand Prix Horse of the Year was Ravel. Uh, it was Stefan Peters and uh, uh, Kiko uh, as the owner. Um, and uh, the Kiko was there. We had a very nice presentation. Uh, uh, and of course, I don't think anyone would um, be surprised, as I said, that, that Ravel is, was the Grand Prix Horse of the Year, and uh, he certainly certainly deserved to be. He made us all very proud this year. We also uh, recognized our life, two Lifetime Achievement uh, recipients, uh, Jack Kimball, who uh, received it posthumously, that um, he was from Florida, was, I think, quite... He was quite active, quite involved in the development of the Florida circuit in the very early days, uh, and also um, in the development in the beginnings of the USDF back in 1973. He was part of the first group that got together to form the USDF. Our other lifetime achievement recipient was um, Judith Noon from Massachusetts. Uh, Judith really, I think, can be credited with with sort of getting our youth programs going in this country, uh, starting in the basically in the early 80s. Uh, she developed and chaired the first youth committee that we had within the United States Dressage Federation. Um, she, through that, continued to do quite a bit to promote youth and had done a lot prior to that with the New England Dressage Association as well. So that was, that was a lot of fun to recognize uh, those two. And Judith was there, and uh, it was a, a, a great. It was it was it was just a lot of fun, and then and to see the the enjoyment on her face. Uh, Jack Kimball's family, his widow, was there, and uh, some of their children, and they were. It was really nice to see that too. Like, you know, those those I think as president, those probably are your best moments when you're able to give those awards. Yeah, absolutely, and recognize those wonderful lifetime achievements. And I believe it's well attended. You had what 350 attendees there at the Hyatt Regency Ballroom, so uh, quite a big party. It was. It was. A, it was a great party. And then, of course, we recognized all of the um, you know the the winners from the Horse of the Year and and. Uh, we have gold, silver, bronze medalists that, that from our Rider Medal Awards program, and so it's just a, it's a lot of fun. Well, you mentioned George that you had to get back to ride your own horses. Tell us about what you're riding now and what your plans are for the winter season down there in Florida. Well, I have I have um, a couple of horses, but for this year, my primary horse is a horse by the name of John Bailey, who has been competing for the last basically for the last two years. Uh, he was reserved in a developing horse in 2009. Uh, we made it to the I-1 championships this year. I think we ended up sixth at Gladstone in, um, 
that was in August. Um, but uh, he he's doing well, and I'm looking forward to competing him, and hope to be trying out for the Pan Am Games with him. We will be ride, going, you know, riding the qualifiers, taking it one one competition at a time, and see how we do. But he's he's doing well. Well, certainly a busy man uh, with uh, multiple responsibilities now, and not least of all with the U.S. Dressage Federation. We want to thank you, George, for taking time out to talk to us here on the show this week. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, our thanks again to George Williams, a, a very busy man with a lot of responsibilities. But, you know, the Dressage Federation is dynamic as ever. There's always something happening with dressage you know, all when you look, go to the symposiums and the, and the conventions, Mary, you see people of all ages. Yeah, it's true. They're passionate at the sport. Some of them are still riding, um, and many of them are not, but they're still dedicated and loyal volunteers. Well, th- uh, thanks again to George, and we're going to take a short break here to uh, listen to, to uh, Glenn, who's got some product information uh, from Kentucky Performance Products, and then when we come back, Mary is a, a very useful tip of the week, so don't go away. We'll be back in just a second. Regular listeners to the show know that we love Kentucky Performance Products, and that's an easy thing to do because Kentucky Performance Products stand behind their products and they believe in them. Your complete satisfaction is guaranteed. If you are unsatisfied with any of their products, they will gladly refund your money. Does your horse or pony get fat on air alone? Is he living in a dry lot or turned out with a muzzle? Can't feed him more than a handful of grain and some hay? Then you need microphase. Microphase is a great way to ensure your horse or pony gets all of the nutrients he needs to stay healthy without adding calories to his diet. Microphase contains the vitamins and trace minerals not found in grass or hay, and your horse will eat it right out of your hand. You can learn more about Microphase and all of the products from Kentucky Performance Products by visiting kppusa.com. That's kppusa.com. Check out Microphase. Well, Mary, um, you've been bringing us useful little tips of the week, and I know that you also record tips for Horse Tip Daily here on the Horse Radio Network. I do, and it's something that I love to do. It's it's fun to deliver tips that I hope are useful to the listeners out there. I know. Well, and we talked about wintering last time you were on the show and getting ready for you know the winter and uh, you know all that you need to do to get, get winterized, as you called it. Mm-hmm. And I I think this week you've got a tip about winter riding, and you were calling it no end or no problem. Well, <laughs> I've got to tell you, Mary, it's a bit darn cold to be riding in the snow in 18 degrees. I think I'd want to be indoors. But so, <laughs> so what's your tip about riding in the snow? Well, though many are fortunate to have access to an indoor or migrate to the warmer places during the winter, there's still a lot of people that are left to their own devices when it comes to winter riding. <clears throat> I know those of us at Cadence Farm, we don't have an indoor, but we're lucky that many people within our town have an indoor, and it's just um, a short hack away to go to the indoor. But I think that we can also take advantage of not of ha- being forced to ride outdoors during the winter months and using snow as a training tool. Deep and fluffy snow is always a thrill to ride through, and it's a great strengthening exercise. Just like running through sand or water for us, you can ride your horse through soft snow, and it encourages the horse to lift their legs and step underneath themselves, which is a very good thing to do, especially for the dressage horses. Keep in mind that this doubles the horse's work, for the her- horse's work so keep snow riding sessions short and sweet with lots of breaks. And then moving on, you know, our... our arena this time of year is quite hard and not really ideal for doing much um, other than walk work. But this is could be an opportunity to train yourself mentally while in the dressage arena. And I, I tell a lot of my students to try riding their tests all at the walk. Lateral exercises are great to perform at the walk because they allow you time to feel and think about every stride. And this also gives you a great chance to focus on precision because it's much easier to accomplish many um, of your movements at a slower pace. You can ride your test of the walk accurately, and you can mentally train yourself not to miss easy, accurate C points when you go on to ride the test in other gates in the show ring. And lastly, since accuracy means so much to us dressage riders, and often points are lost because of wiggly lines or egg-shaped circles, let the snow be your teacher. Enter your untouched snow-covered arena, and every circle and every line and movement you perform will be there for your eyes to see 
as the snow unveils any misshapen patterns. And I know as a kid, I, I used to love writing my name on my pony in the snow, but never thought that it'd be a useful training tool. But it certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> you can ride your center line and evaluate the pattern in the snow to see how straight and center it really was. Yeah, that's a very good tip, Mary. You know, and you need lots of thermals on to be doing that, you know. <laughs> you do. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But again, for the dedicated equestrian, hopefully they can take that opportunity to uh, strengthen their horse and strengthen their mind as well. Well, you know, it might be a blessing to not have to ride in this cold weather, Mary. And, you know, when, when the doctors say, you can ride again in a couple of months, and, <laughs> but then you're thinking, oh, yeah, well, I'll be in Florida. So, I'll yeah. It's not so bad. I don't really miss out, miss out um, when I can't ride in the bitter cold. Well, thanks for that, Mary. I think we're just about running out of time this week, but we do want to remind our listeners of what's coming up uh, with, a, with our series, our quiz series, that we're going to be starting shortly. And as I've mentioned before on the show, we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. We're going to take a listener and team them up with one of our co-hosts, one of our riders, and they will be doing battle against another rider with their uh, partner, listener. And the winner will then go through to the next round. Now, those of you who were listening last winter will know that we had a quiz competition between Debbie McDonald and Heather Blitz. And the winner of that was actually Debbie. So we're going to call them back for a rematch before we get this series underway because it, we're doing it slightly different this year. And I believe you're going to be in the second round, Mary. So do you have a listener lined up? I think I have someone in mind, yes. I'm really excited to do it. Excellent, excellent. Well, I should tell you that we, we got lots of people emailing me and leaving me messages. And then I saw some people at the USDF convention last week who uh, had already said they really want to be on the show as Debbie and Heather's partner. So... That is going to be Debbie McNally. She's going to partner with Debbie McDonald. I think we'll have to give her a nickname for that <laughs> show, don't you? That's what I was thinking, two Debbies. <laughs> and then Marsha Anderson is going to team up with uh, Heather Blitz. So that's our first round of competition. We shall, we'll be starting that shortly. If we can get that lined up uh, for as soon as next week, that would be great. I think it would be a lot of fun and uh, have a bit of uh, festive spirit <clears throat> into, into the show as mm -hmm. we lead up to Christmas. So the winner of that round will go forward to play Mary and her partner. Uh, are you going to be oh, ready gosh. for this, Mary? That's a lot of pressure. I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to start uh, reviewing my dressage books to make sure I'm up on everything. There you go. There you go. Well, we always have fun with it. All right. Well, that uh, that about wraps it up for this week. Mary, do you want to remind everybody how to reach us? Sure. You can find our show notes on the website at www.dressageradio.com. Visit our fan page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio and Chris E. Stafford. And you can follow me at Mary Dressage. Contact us at Chris at Horse Radio Network.com. And you can always pick up the phone and call. The number there is, is 270-803-0025. And you can always leave a voicemail. And those are the ways you can contact us. Right. Thanks, Mary. And I want to thank all our sponsors who make this show possible. Our guests uh, this week, George Williams, and, of course, my co-host here, Mary Lauritsen, for getting in the co-host chair again. And don't forget to check out all the other shows here on the Horse Radio Network. We have eight, sh eight different shows now, Mary. There's something for everybody here on the Horse Radio Network, and we're going to have some fun with those over the Christmas holidays. So be sure to, be sure to tune in again. And uh, again, I want to thank everybody that came and said hello last week. Lovely to meet you all. Uh, don't forget to send me your uh, questions, comments, and suggestions. Always love to hear from you. Well, that about wraps it up, Mary. Um, are you going out into the cold? <laughs> yeah, I was just out there, but I'll be heading back out for a night check. Uh, good for you. All right, Mary. Well, we'll catch up with you in uh, in a few weeks' time on the quiz. Thanks again for joining us. I will be back here same time, same place next week. So until then. Thanks to everyone around the world for listening. And don't forget to practice safe riding by always wearing your helmet and fastening that chin strap.